Hello, so today I'm going to be doing a video on Battleship Galaxies. This is a game that came out back in uh, 2011. I think when it came out uh, there were plans to make more than just this one set, but I, I guess it didn't do very well, so I don't think any other sets came out in this uh, series of games. But uh, anyway, let me show you how to set it up how to play and then I'll give you a few thoughts about it and um, I don't know if I mentioned I'm, I think I said that this came out in 2011 I last played it in 2014 until earlier today when I played it again um, so I could relearn it to make this video I also wanted to mention it did come with this uh, comic book that kind of set well maybe I'll show you kind of sets up the story for what's going on in the game. It actually wasn't too bad. So they must have put some some money into this thinking they were going to you know, have a successful series of games, but uh yeah, I guess it didn't work out. All right, the first thing you'll do is choose a mission. Um, they're in the back of the rules manual, and it looks like it came, only came with uh, maybe five missions or so in this rule set. So we'll just uh, go with the first mission. So you basically follow the setup instructions that are here yeah, um, in the mission details. So we'll do that when I'll go through setup for that. The, uh, ga the game actually does come with two map boards. Um, you know, see this one is one and then there's an, another one over here I still got folded up but uh, the mission will tell you which map you need this one we're gonna play only uses this one map board but you can see there is a mission here that uses both and you can see the mission will sh show you your goal to uh, to win the game in this mission it's just destroy all the enemy ships on the battlefield now if this enemy still has ships he hasn't deployed yet um, behind his screen as you can see each player has a screen where uh, they will hide their uh, ships and ship cards so the opponent doesn't know what ships they haven't deployed yet um, but even if he still has some behind his screen um, if, if all his ships on the map on the battlefield have been destroyed then he loses so that's how you win this match all right so you'll get the map board that it shows and put it in your play area which I've done here then it says take all these discovery tiles these each have like uh, unique powers which we can discuss for the ones that happen to appear in this game but it says uh, shuffle them up and you're gonna choose three of them to go face down on this map and you can see where they go kind of in these so we'll pick this one, it'll go face down there. We'll pick this one, it'll go face down there. And we'll pick this one, we'll go face down here. And when a ship goes over one of those spaces, moves over it, then you reveal it and whatever uh, effect it has will take place. There are other things like debris field and asteroid fields that uh, can be in some missions they just don't happen to be in this mission and they have their own effects all right then for each um, player the, you have the ISN side um, which is like intergalactic space navy side and then the wretch side um, they'll find the ship cards corresponding to what it says here and put them behind their screen so you'll see this says like seasoned ISN Everest. Most ships have three possible combinations. They can be a standard, a seasoned, or a veteran. So in this case it says find the ship card for the seasoned ISN uh, Everest, which is this one. You can see it says ISN Everest, seasoned. So um, anyway, you'll find the ship cards for each one um, that it tells you. So got the seasoned ISN Everest, I got the uh, standard ISN Barrage, and the ship card, you know, we'll go over what it tells you, but it has a little image of what the ship's going to look like. We got the seasoned ISN Torrent, 
And we got the standard uh, F-51 Blue Sparrow Squadron. And I got the corresponding ships uh, here for the wretch side. And anyway, you just place those behind your player screen. Then each side has their own deck of tactics cards. You can tell this icon is for the ISN um, faction card or tactics cards, and this deck is for the wretch. So it will show you which cards to go through and get um, for this mission. So like this one, you'll find three superior squadron taxes, ta tactics. The ISN side will three twin rocket launchers. Uh, the wretch side will get three fortune bounty. So anyway, you go through your um, tactics cards decks and find those cards, um, shuffle them up. So I've done that for each side. This is the deck for the ISN side, shuffled up and you just put it near your screen. And same for the uh, wretch side. I've sh found the cards that it said and shuffled them up and put them near my screen. I didn't mention this, but for each ship card that it tells you to get, you find the corresponding ship and place the and place those behind your screen. These ship models are actually not too bad. They this is like the main large ship for the ISN side, the Everest. They have like a light wash on them. Um, let me show you for the other side. You know, this is their ships, and they have kind of a light wash on them so they're not painted but they do have a wash on them so I thought they looked pretty good so as I was saying for each ship card that the uh, mission told you to get you find the corresponding miniature and put it behind your screen again so uh, your opponent does not know what ships you have now of course I'm playing solo by myself so I just have these screens set up here to kind of show you but you would be on opposite sides of the board for instance on this mission it says the ISN player would be sitting on that side and the wretch player would be sitting on this side but for me playing solo I just have it this way now I did want to mention there is an alternate um, way um, you can play instead of going with the suggested ships for the mission the mission also gives you a number of uh, fleet cost points that you can use and you can uh, pick whichever uh, ships you want to use um, spending that that energy cost so for instance here you could uh, pick your own fleet with a total of 48 energy and the energy is the launch cost of the ship. So for instance, this Blue Sparrow Cot Squadron uh, has a launch cost of two, so that would only be two of your 48 points. Um, but this ISN Torrent has a launch cost of 10, so that would be another 10. And you can see the larger ship, like the Everest, has a launch cost of 15. So again, you could pick uh, your own ships, um, spending up to 48 total points. And then instead of going with the t suggested tactics cards here, you can pick your own tactics cards, um, but you can only take a, a total of uh, half half the energy cost used your, for your fleet. So 24, you could pick 24 tactics cards, and you can't have more than three of the same card in your deck. That's the only rules there. Each player will put their energy marker on the number 15 space of their energy card. Now these energy uh, cards would normally be out where your opponent can see them to see how much energy you have and how much you're spending. It wouldn't normally be behind your screen like your ships and ship cards would be. Then you roll, uh, you know, this eight sided die to see who goes first, high roll goes first and that's it for setup um, again each player has their ships and ship cards behind their screen so their opponent doesn't see them they've got their uh, energy board uh, with their marker set at 15 the map is set out with uh, in this case the rich player on this side the ISN player on that side
And again, the wretch player over here with his ships and ship cards behind his screen. And then you're ready to start play. I did forget one thing during setup. Um, after, before you start, each player will draw five cards from their uh, tactics deck into their hand. All right, and of course you'll keep your uh, five cards, your hand of cards, hidden from your opponent. Um, you can have a maximum hand side of ten tactics cards. If uh, you would draw a card, a card that would be your eleventh card, you have to discard one first. You don't get to draw one and then discard. You have to discard before you draw a card that would take you over ten. Alright, so uh, let's start with how you play. So the first thing you have is your energy phase. Um, so the first player, let's say this guy was the first player, he has his energy phase. Now normally uh, the first thing in the energy phase you get um, 10, you add 10 energy to your um, energy board. But on the first turn of the game, uh, the first player only gets 5. After that, everybody gets uh, 10. Then after you've gained your energy in the energy phase, you get to draw one additional tactics card into your hand. Then you go to the deploy phase. Now in the deploy phase, that's when you'll pay the launch cost to launch ships into your uh, starting area. Now you'll notice on the map, there's kind of a light, lighter colored edge of the map on each side. So that's your starting area. So when you're going to launch a ship, you would um, pay the launch cost. So for instance, the launch cost of the ISN Everest is 15, but the launch cost of maybe the ISN Torrent is only 10. When you launch a ship, let's just say we're launching the ISN Torrent. You put a number of blue pegs into it to equal its shield value. So this one has a shield value of two. So you just put two blue pegs in there somewhere and it doesn't matter which of these holes you put it in. And then it has to be so, uh, you know, the, on this map the ISN launches from this side. So at least um, the back end of your ship, at least one part of your ship must go into the lighter colored uh, start area. So you could pay 10 energy to launch the ISN torrent and then you subtract your 10 energy um, from your energy board. And you could launch and then you take the card out from behind uh, the uh, your your screen and put it out in view of the other player and they know now you've got that ship on the board. If you want to launch a squadron like this one only has a launch cost of two so you would pay two. Um, you'll notice that squadrons have three ships so you actually launch all three of them for the for the launch cost of two. They have one shield so they get one blue peg and then they have to go in the starting area and each one must be adjacent to at least one other uh, ship in the squad. So, like so. And they have to each be within the lighter colored starting area. So you can continue to launch ships, um, you know, until you run out of energy, but you want to reserve some energy because after the deploy phase you have the um, action phase and then that's going to cost energy to actually activate your ships. Now one other thing you can do when you're deploying some ships like larger ships like the ISDN Everest they have this icon here and there's a card that shows what the, all these symbols mean but that icon is capacity. So the ISN, ISN Everest has a capacity of 12. So when you launch that, you can um, put other ships with it. And the, how much space they take up of the capacity is how many spaces they take up on the board. So 
um, let's just say if you were going to launch the ISN Everest, ISN Everest um, and you were going to put this ship, the ISN Barrage, with it, um, you could actually, <laughs> since the ISN Everest has a, a capacity of 12, he could actually fit all of these ships that we started with, because this is, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He could actually fit all those ships um, inside. But if you're going to do that, um, you just pay the launch cost of the ship that you're launching um, at the beginning, and any ships that are going to be with it, as long as it fits within its capacity, you just put their card underneath, and then you would just put that ship out on the starting space and um, the other ships would remain behind your screen so the player the opponent does not know what ships you have loaded in the ISN Everest then later in the game uh, maybe when your ships further out during the deploy phase you could then pay the launch cost at that time to launch the uh, ISN barrage pay the launch cost of nine and then you can put it adjacent to the ISN Everest and then it's launched now if your ship that is carrying other ships is destroyed before those ships have launched then all those ships are destroyed with it or if it's taken over there are some powers that allow an opponent to take over your ship if they take over your ship, any ships that are being carried inside of it are destroyed. And once you, if you were carrying ships and then later you decide to launch them in the deploy phase, you just take their card out from underneath the other one and then it's out in your play area with ships that you have in play. But we'll just go back to our example where it's the deploy phase and we've deployed the ISN Torrent and the... Uh, Blue Sparrow Squadron, we paid their deploy cost, so we're down to 8 energy. Now, after the deploy phase, you go into the action phase. So in the action phase, you pay the activation cost, which you can see each ship has an activation cost. The ISN Torrent has an activation cost of 3. The uh, Blue Sparrow Squadron has an activation cost of 3. So if you wanted to activate <clears throat> the uh, ISN Torrent, you have to pay the activation cost of 3, so we have to pay another 3 energy. And then we can move the ISN Torrent up to its movement. So when you're moving these two spaceships, you just have to um, remember that um, if you move it, the back end has to go wherever the front end was. So if that was a move of 1... And then I was going to move two. I would turn it like that, the back end going where the front end was before. And then maybe three, or if you want to move here, three. Um, so anyway, he can move up to four. Then after you've moved eat, um, your ship, you can then um, attack with it. And if you pay the activation cost of a squadron, you just pay the activation cost once. So three energy, and then each one of the ships in the squadron can move up to five spaces so you know each one could move by and once they've been they don't have to stick together after they've been when you launch them they have to be adjacent but after that you can move them you know one two three four five and this one could go one two three four five and this one could go one two three four five so they don't have to stick together and again um I mentioned when you launch them, you put the shield uh, peg in there, depending on the number of shields that it said. So anytime you launch a ship, you do that. So after you move your ships, um, when you activate your ships, you move, and then you can attack. So if we were in range of another ship, say there was a an enemy ship here, um, each of your ships, so if you activated the torrent, you move it, then you can then attack. So you look at your primary weapon. It has a range of seven. So, I mean, obviously he could attack even if he was way out here. Because okay, range of seven, one, two, three, four, five. If it has a charge cost, you would have to pay that in energy. Most 
most weapons have a charge cost of zero, but some do have a cost, and if it does, you would have to pay that in energy uh, on your energy port. So you'd have to have the energy to be able to pay it to fire. But then if it's in within range, you see the number of attacks you get, and in this case, you just get one attack, and if it hits, um, you do two damage. So when you make an attack, this is the only part that is really like the game battleship. So when you make an attack, you roll the coordinate dice. You pick your target. You say who's attacking, pick their target. Roll the dice. Then you see I got an I-4. So you look at, your opponent will look at his, his ship and cross, you know, reference I-4. If it's anywhere in the gray area, then that is a hit. So he would say... Yes, I-4, that's a hit. And then you would do the number of damage. You know, again, this his strength is 2, so he's going to two, do 2 damage. Now, if you still have shields, you remove 2 shield pegs from that opponent's ship. Once all the shields are gone, then if you do damage, you start putting the red pegs on there, because that, and then that's hold damage. And they can take a number of hold damage, as shown here. So once... This ship that I've got out here as an example um, takes a total of five hull damage, then it's destroyed. Now you'll also notice that each ship has a little critical, like on this ship it's E5. If it gets hit on E5, it's just automatically destroyed. Now not if it still has shields. If it has shields, the shield peg just gets removed. But if its shields are down and it gets hit in that critical space, it's automatically destroyed. So that's how you um, pretty much play a turn. You know, you have your energy phase where you'll gain your energy and draw a tactics card. You'll then you'll have your deploy phase where you can deploy any ships you haven't previously deployed, pay the energy cost. Then you can activate um, each of your ships or squadrons, paying their energy cost to move and attack with them. Now, uh, we haven't talked about tactics cards. So let's just look at the hand of cards that this ISN player has. So um, he's got this Aaron Cho. So you could play that shows you what phase you can play it in. So it's your deploy phase. Um, and then you can kind of look what the power of this card is. If you deploy it once during each of your deploy phases, you may spend two energy to return any one ISN solo additional weapon card from your discard pile to your hand. But... Um, there's a couple of icons up here to keep in mind. If you're going to play this card, um, it's a hero. You can tell that by the star. And um, like this ISN Torrent, you can see here, it can have up to two heroes attached to it. Some cards, like the Squadron, they can't have any heroes attached to them. But this is a hero card, so it, it, it could... This, could have so when you deploy during your deploy phase you could deploy Aaron Cho but it has an energy cost you'd have to spend four energy to deploy um, Aaron Cho to this ship but if you do then this ship then has the the power that goes along with Aaron Cho now you cannot have the same ship or more than one ship in your squadron that's active cannot have the same so even if you have another Aaron Cho card in here you can't play two to the same ship and you can't even play um, as if you have one ship in play that's got Aaron Cho you can't um, have another ship that in play that has another Aaron Cho card in here so I kind of confused <laughs> why they have more than one um, you know of these heroes in the deck I guess in case that ship gets destroyed that had that player in it you could then play another one, but uh, anyway. Here's another tactics card that you can play during your deploy phase. Again, it costs four to play it. It's got this icon, which you can check here, which means it's an additional weapon. So you can add it to a ship. Again, like this ISN tor it Torrent, it can have one additional weapon. So you could, during the deploy phase, pay four energy to attach this additional weapon to the ISN torrent, you know, if it was deployed, and then that gives you, some, you know, an additional attack. And when you're attacking with your ships, you can attack 
um, with all the weapons that it has. Now, they don't, you can only attack once with them unless it has more than one attack. For instance, this um, has a zero charge, costs only a range of two, but it gets two attacks. And some other tactics cards. This one you can actually play in your opponent's action phase, but you got to pay three. And it's an event, so you just uh, do whatever it says and then discard it. Here's one that uh, you play during your action phase, costs one energy. It's an event also, that's what that icon means, and it says that. So you would read it, do what it says, and then discard that card. So your tactics cards, um, as you can see, give you additional weapons you can put on some of your ships, give you um, heroes that you can put on your ship that give you bonuses and that kind of thing. Um, there's some sabotage cards that you can put on enemy ships. Um, so they just give you different things, and as we talked about, they, they tell you uh, when you can deploy them. Now, if you ever go through your... Uh, tactics deck and run out of cards you can shuffle the discard pile um, and then create a new draw deck if both players ever go through their once you've gone through your tactics deck a second time you can't make a new deck you just leave it um, you, there, you can't draw anymore if both players go through their tactics decks twice before the game is won in another method then the game ends and you score um, depending on um, the, inner, the uh, launch cost of ships you still have in play and then whoever has the total highest launch cost of ships still in play wins the game at that time. So you just go back and forth um, taking turns. Now each player does have these cards which gives you a turn sequence and shows the symbols. So uh, after one player has done his energy phase, deployment phase, action phase, then it goes to the next player. Back and forth again until one player's in this mission, until one player's ships are destroyed or until the tactics deck is run out twice. Um, now we didn't talk about, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the game we set up these um, discovery tiles. If a, if a player's ship lands on top of one, you flip it over and look at it and reference the manual and see you know what that one is. This one happens to be an energy source, so if at the beginning of your turn during the energy phase, if you have a ship on top of this tile, you gain an extra two energy. Uh, this one here, let me see what that is. That one is in orbital market, so if at the beginning of your turn you have a ship on top of that tile, um, during your energy phase you get to draw an additional tactics card. And then this one, well that one's another energy source that we talked about, but there is few more types. Let's see. Uh, this one here. This is a warp gate. If you have a ship on top of there and you activate it, instead of moving it like normal, you can move it anywhere up to 13 spaces away from that warp gate and place it. This one's an observation station. If one of your ships uh, is on top of the observation station, then uh, all your ships during that turn uh, get two added to their uh, range. This one's a shield generator. If one of your ships is on top of that at the start of it, it's, uh, I think it's activation. Let me double check that. Now, if one of your ships is on top of this at the start of your energy phase, you get to add one shield peg to it. And finally, we have the alien artifact. If a ship is on the alien artifact they get to add seven to their uh, range. Only theirs. Whereas the observation station if you had a ship on that all your ships get plus two added to their range. Only the ship on the observation station gets seven added to its range. So that's pretty much how you play. Now, some ships may have special abilities like, well, you know, we'll just look at the Vapor's Fate. 
it has some special bit. First of all, it has two. It has a primary and a secondary weapon. Then it's got this power. When you attach an additional weapon or ship upgrade to the ship, you pay four less to attach it. Um, also, superior shielding. As Vapor's Fate has its shields up when it's hit by an attack, you may roll the number die. If you roll a six plus, ignore all damage from that attack. So, again, some of the ships have special abilities. You just have to read those when you're playing them. Tell your opponent what they are. Um, but that's how the game plays. Um, why don't we go through one or two example turns, and then I'll give you my thoughts. All right, I've got all everybody reset, so we'll go through a couple of turns. We'll say this guy's first. It's the first turn of the game, so instead of getting 10 energy, he just gets 5 energy, so he goes up to 20, and he gets to draw a tactics card. Now, uh, that's the energy phase, so now we go to the deployment phase. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned... Um, in my game turn or how tank turn goes but at any time you can discard one of your tactics cards to gain an energy all right so i'm in the deployment phase i'm going to deploy the isn if everest and i'm going to transport the isn barrage and the f-15 blue sparrows with it so i tuck their cards underneath and i can do that again because it has a trend uh, capacity of 12 and um, the ISN Barrage only has takes up two spaces, and the Blue Sparrows take up three, so that's only a total of five. So I tuck them under this card. My opponent wouldn't know what ships I put under there. I only pay the launch cost of the ISN Everest, so that's 15. So that only leaves me with five now, and I take the ISN Everest. i got to put uh, five shields on it. All right, so I got five blue pegs on it. And then at least, you know, one section of the base has to be in the starting area. So I'll just put the back end section of it that's in that, that lighter starting area. So I've deployed the Iston Everest. Um, I've got five points left. I'm going to take one of my tactics cards. Um, can be used in the deploy phase. It's going to cost four Bronson Skiles. It's a hero and I'm going to attach him to the ISN Everest and he gives me the um, This ship adds one to its primary weapon strength So I got to pay for him. So that's four. So now I'm down to one energy So that's the end of my deployment phase and since I'm down to one energy I really can't even activate the ISN Everest because it costs six to activate it. So that's the end of my turn All right, we come over here to the wretch player. It's the start of his energy fiat phase He gets 10 energy. So he goes up to 25 Everyone from now on will get 10 energy uh, um, in their energy phase. It's only the first turn the first player the first turn that he only gets five but then we also get to draw a tactics card now we go to the deploy phase and just to do something a little different we'll launch we'll deploy the uh, <coughs> Sobotet and the red to togu squadron so we got to pay launch cost of eight plus five so launch cost cost of 13 so that's 10 11 12 13 all right, put four shields because the Sobotet has a shield of four. And I will uh, put him on my start area there. Now we got to get our red Togu fighters. They don't get any shields. Um, and we'll put one, two. Remember, they got to go to adjacent to a previously placed one, three. And then from our, tax, our uh, tactics cards, we're going to deploy Crawl Draxus. He's a hero to the Sobotet. It can have two heroes. Cost four. So we got to pay four. One, two, three, four. Now well, if I can get you in. And he, uh, when this ship receives damage from an attack that would destroy, you may... Roll the number die. If you roll a 7+, plus, ignore all damage. And when this ship is attacking with its primary weapon, you add 1 to the strength of that attack for each hero attached to the targeted ship. 
All right, well, that's all I'm going to do in my deploy phase. Now I'm going to go to my action phase. I still have eight energy. It costs four to activate the Sobwatet, so I'll do that. So I'll spend four, one, four. And he can move up to five. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. He's going to maybe try to go see what's under here. And then two to activate our red Taugu, I'm not sure how you say that, Taugu squadron. So we'll pay the two to activate that. And then that lets us move all of these ships and they can move up to six. And they're going to kind of stay around the Sobwatet to try to protect it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, because I activated these ships, if they were in range of an enemy ship, they could also attack. But Sobwatet's uh, range is four, and the Red Togus, their range is just one. And, you know, the ISN Everest is a lot further away than that. So uh, that's pretty much all I can do on my uh, action phase. So that's going to end my turn, and now it goes back to the ISN turn. All right, so we're back to ISN. He gets 10 because he's in the energy phase. He gets 10 and he gets to draw a card. And I uh, forgot to do this um, when I launched the uh, ISN Everest. It says when launching this ship, you may search your draw pile and remove up to two LRN nuclear warhead cards and attach them to this ship without paying their energy cost. So I search my draw pile. Then you got to reshuffle your... So I should have attached that when I launched it. Now, there's not another one in my draw pile. I do have more in my hand, but it says you search your draw pile, so I guess I don't get to attach those without a cost. So anyway, I'm just going to do it back and doing that. But I'm in my deploy phase now. So I'm not going to deploy any ships. I'm going to go right to my uh, action phase. So I'm going to activate. So that's going to cost me six. One, two, three four, five, six. That lets me activate the ISN Everest. I can move up to three. So one, two, three. And then I can fire, but my range is either four, two, or with this nuclear warhead, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm still not in range of anybody. So I think I'll end my turn there. So now we go back over to the wretch turn. They're in their energy phase. They gain, gain 10 and draw a tactics card. Now they're in their deploy phase. I think I'll play this uh, shield siphon. I can play it in my deploy phase. It's an upgrade. You can see that here. And the Sobwatet can have up to two upgrades. So it costs me four. One, two, three, four. And what that does is once per turn, if this ship inflicts at least one shield damage with an attack from its primary weapon, you may add one shield pick. Now, I don't think you can go over your maximum shield, so unless I take a shield damage, I don't think I can add an extra. Um, so anyway, that's all I'm going to do in my deploy phase. Now I'm going to go to my action phase. I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to activate the Red Togu Squadron, so that costs two, one, two. And then I can move and activate, move and attack with each one. Now, their range is only one, so uh, I can move six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, here's something I didn't talk about. If one of your ships moves adjacent to an enemy ship, then it, it can possibly take ECM damage or electronic countermeasure damage. So you have to roll a die, and on a 5+, plus, hopefully we don't get a 5+, plus. oh, we did 7, and the opponent actually rolls the die, the, the person whose ship you move next to. Um, but anyway, if you move next to a small ship and you take ECM damage you take one damage if you move next to a medium ship and you take 
ECM damage, you take two damage. And if you move next to a large ship, which the ISN Everest is, and you take damage, you take three damage. So, unfortunately, um, I have no shield and a hole of three. So three damage is going to kill this ship. So it just goes over into my, you know, my area over here. Unfortunately, unfortunately, because these ships only have a range of one. Oh, look at this. Any ECM damage received is ignored. So I don't, I don't take that. Now normally, you, <laughs> you would take ECM damage, but I didn't notice on this red toe goose. I guess because their range is one, any 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 ECM damage is ignored. So he will get to attack. Um, he has a range of one. A attack of one and a strength of one so he rolls an a6 we look at the an a6 is a hit so he does one damage so that's going to take off one shield all right now we get to move this next one one two three four five six he gets to roll normally he would have to check for ecm damage but again these ships don't have that apparently so he got an e8 so an e Eight up. Oh, that's a miss. So he's just going to miss. So finally, this last guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's not adjacent, so he's only got a range of one, so he can't attack. All right. Now we'll activate the Sobotet. Cost four to activate. One, two, three, four. And he can move up to five. One, two, three. We're going to move him on here see what we got that was the market so if he stays on there he gets to draw an additional tactics card now that was only three right he can move five so four if he stays on there then he's in range one two three four because his uh, his range is four so he gets to make an attack so he'll roll he got an F8. That's going to be a miss, unfortunately. All the 8s are a miss. F8. So he misses. If he had hit, he would have had a strength of 3, but plus also because he had this guy, he would have add 1 to that strength for each hero attached, and there is one hero attached here. So he would have got to add one. So he would have got to do four damage, which would have removed the rest of the shields. But unfortunately, he missed. So and he's only got two energy left. And he's already activated all his ships anyway. Um, so that's all he can do this round. So I think you know we went through a couple turns. I I think you can see how the game plays. I actually think it's pretty fun two-player game now. You know, the rules say you can play with more than two players, obviously, if you have another set. And then, you know, two players can be on one side and two players on another. And then you just start with your first pet player and go clockwise or whatever. Um, but if you just have one set, it's pretty much a two-player game. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I hadn't played since 2014. But uh, it's... Uh, it's it's a fun little game and definitely for you know something that it's, it's definitely not battleship it's not as simple a game as battleship is i i kind of wish that it had uh, done better and they would have come out with different sets with um some different races and different ships and stuff different tactics cards uh, i think it would have probably been something you know fun to play and maybe play with if you had another set with different races and stuff for allies and I've been able to uh, play with multiple players. That would have been pretty fun. But like I said, it I think it didn't do well. It, they quit selling it not too long after it came out, <laughs> from what I remember. And no additional sets were made. But I think it's a fun game. It's easy. Um, it's not too easy like Battleship. It's got some tactical play to it. And you um, have to you know decide whether you want to spend your energy for tactics cards or deploying more ships and um, that kind of thing now we didn't show here you know remember that everest has some other ships so like in my next deploy phase i could have deployed those um, 
other ships paying their launch cost and then put them right out here adjacent to me and I could have attacked these ships with that and the uh, wretch player hadn't even launched his large ship yet but anyway uh, there you go I hope you uh, enjoy thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it